very cold evening and uh, hoping to talk to you about some of my work. I think this is something which has been quite confusing for my publishers, that I work across several genres. I do like working with history very much, the so-called historical novel, um, but I also like to not neglect contemporary subjects. I wouldn't like to be categorised as only a historical novelist. Um, the, the, the next question that always comes up is, is, it, is the experience between the two very different um, in terms of research, the research you have to do and the feat of the imagination that you have to put into it? And I say that for me, it isn't really very different. I do a lot of research for the contemporary fiction and obviously I do a slightly more for the historical fiction. But the thing with research, it seems to me, is that you have to do it very well. Um, and then, in a sense, you have to forget it. You have to make it yours. Um, I read novels where the author has clearly done a lot of research, and that research appears in the book as data. And that is not what I like to happen in my books. I like the research, in a sense, to be invisible, whether it's talking to people about their experience that I'm writing about in the present, or the, the reading and, um, and looking at pictures that I've done from the past. It has to be digested, um, absorbed, it has to be alchemized. And I've always been, since my very, very early um, beginnings as a writer, uh, and I still believe this, that the imagination is, has fantastic power and that we don't have to have experienced something. Uh, to be able to write about it. I think, I think yes, with contemporary fiction, um, unless, um, you know, unless I was writing about my own life, which is something I've <laughs> avoided doing, um, and I think will continue to avoid doing, uh, there are, I suppose there are bits of me in my books, um, parts of my childhood, people I've known, displays, disguised, and so on, but I haven't drawn very much on my, my own biography. So it means that as an example, my novel The Road Home was about um, a young man coming from Eastern Europe to work over here and he's had a terrible time. Everything has been taken away from him. His wife has died. Um, he's lost his job. Things have gone very badly for him and he comes here to try and make a new start. Now, it was very important for me um, to understand what people like him actually felt. So I spent a lot of time talking to mainly Polish workers in the area of England where I live, which is Norfolk, who were working um, mainly in, in fruit picking and vegetable picking. And I got a lot of individual stories. I, I mean, I said to them, it's not that I want to steal your stories. I don't want to steal your stories, but I want to st understand how you feel, and particularly how your parents feel, your parents who have been left behind in a world that perhaps they no longer understand. Um, so that took a lot of time and a lot of patience. And again, as I said just before, um, those stories had to sort of be digested in my mind and um, embellished and added to and taken away from. Um, so it's part research and part imagination. And I would say probably kind of 50-50. I think there are a lot of decisions you have to make before you start on a novel. And um, one of the most profound decisions, which may come early or it may come late, is what voice you're going to tell the story in. And um, I think that's another thing, by the way, that's very important about writing, is that you don't get bored with it. <laughs> this thing about who is your, your core reader, who, who are you writing for? And you know, every writer would have a different answer to that. But, but my most truthful answer is that I'm really writing for myself, to entertain myself. And this is a subject which I've explored in, in a couple of contemporary novels as well. Um, the, the, problems that we face when, when we pass the age of 60 and we begin to see the shape of our lives and we begin to see that there's more time in the past than there is in the future. And how do we come to terms with that? Do we make the right decisions about what we're doing, about the people we love, about the things we... Are we in the right place? Um, and what, you know, how are the things in the past that need resolution which haven't got it? And these are universal subjects, and I'm always striving, incidentally, you know, through contemporary fiction and through the historical fiction, to find a universal thing, so that the, 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 what the, the ideas which the book are 
the book is exploring actually are common to us, to us all.